with the simulations created and the rest is only to create the histogram. Now if you would look in the help function for histogram, you see that it actually links you to a website and there is a tool called start plus but the tool doesn't really add us so much it's a way more complicated tool than what we actually want to do so we are going to do create the histograms ourselves we use this small table on top here where we have calculated the minimum and the maximum values of the simulations right so and what we do then is, well, we'll look at the minimum, like 14, and the maximum is 40. So we can actually create classes between 10 and 40. Straightforward, we start with 10, we add 2 to it, and then we do it for all these cells. So we get to the class. And um, we also want to have the class means for the, the graph over here. And you see that uh, we calculated the, the average. In this case, it's very simple, right? Just uh, 11 between it. Well, later on, it's easier to just reuse that function and um, it always works, right? Now, the observations. The observations, um, in previous exercise, you saw that we used count if to do observations. Now, in this case, we want the count if to between, uh, be between a range, right? So we want it between 10 and 12, and therefore we use this formula, saying just that we count everything bigger than 10, and then we extract everything bigger than 12. Now you see that um, there are some more complications over here because you want to say bigger than, but then you want to append uh, a cell to it, and that's why you need this ampersand sign here, right? So you start like quotes, bigger than sign, ampersand, and then the name of the cell. So in our case, P17, and over here, Q17. <coughs> but the basics is well, it's straightforward. So once you have that formula, you can actually just use them for all your histograms. So you see over here, for example, for the internal rate of return, it's exactly the same. The only thing that changes is the, the class range. So that's actually everything for formulas. The rest is more creating them, interpreting them. So in this case, we started from 10 to 40. You see over here the, the, the graphical representation of the payback period, and you see that it's kind of clear that uh, 23 months is a peak. So you could say, like, um, definitely going to get payback period after two years. Let's have a look at... Uh, internal r rate of return remember that we had uh, calculated twice before and after taxes you see that after taxes here uh, we have uh, a minimum from 11 and a maximum of 63 and so we created a range from 10 till 70 just a bit bigger so you're sure that you show everything clearly and then you see that up uh, again it's a nice graph and you see that you will probably have uh, internal ret uh, rate of return between let's say 25 and 50 which is kind of nice right okay um, before taxes look at uh, how many empty cells there are so in the first case there were 58 empty cells which okay that's a lot but we are we have 500 simulations so we just made sure over here the sum is just to see that we have all the, that we counted everything, right? Because over here we had 500 uh, simulations, so we should actually observe 500 uh, cases. Um, so if you see that this number is too low, you see that your range wasn't good. Um, but over, over here you see that you have 159 observations that are actually empty cells, why? You directly see it over here, see that there's a lot of, um, if, if there wouldn't be any um, benefits from taxes, that's why there's such a difference between before and after, um, you see that it's actually not so the, such an interesting in turn, uh, rate of return, right? So you do see that the taxes actually make the difference because over here you have a big chance that you don't have any internal rate of return while over here you clearly have and then we didn't even calculate the 159 empty cells which are many negative cells 
uh, we, well, so there were negative cells, but we deleted the negative cells because you cannot have negative internal rate of return. So that's why you have so many bad observations. <coughs> okay, then the net present value. Um, we did a little trick because what you see over here is that your net minimum value, in this case, every time when you have empty cells over here, means there is no payback period, no internal rate of return, but we always have a net present value. But the net present value in this case is negative, right? Because you only make losses. Um, which is a little bit problematic for our uh, histogram because what's now our smallest number? Because this is a negative number and we know that it was only just the peak when, when you don't have any gas. So what we did over here is um, calculate from the net present value, which is the biggest positive number. And the biggest positive number is this number. Uh, you do need to take into account, you see the brackets between it, that actually indicates that it's, uh, it's an array function. So you need to uh, press Control, Shift, Enter when you enter this function to, to make sure that it shows anything, because otherwise it will not show anything like, um, yeah. Well, I can just do that, right? If I just enter, you see, it says value nothing. But if I do it with Control Shift Enter, it gives me the value. Um, because of course, if MPVMC, but this is an array, right? So that's why you need an array function. Straightforward if you think about it. So with this uh, smallest number and this biggest number, we see that it's sm never smaller than 10,000, but it's, it's, it's quite, it jumps with big uh, uh, gaps. So what we do is we just start at zero and we add 10,000 all the time. And then we have, uh, again, our class range. And again, you see a nice example of the net present value you can get. So this is just a very small tutorial to show you classes and histogram the class range and the histograms <coughs>